you can't equate animals to humans. I just don't care about animals. I assign no moral value to animals. Sound familiar? Well, let's talk about five strategies for responding to these objections. Plus, I'll throw in a bonus strategy at the end. Start by asking them, but for real though, like genuinely, do you really not care about animals at all? Like it doesn't matter at all what happens to them. So the delivery here is key. You want to be empathetic, but with a tinge of concern and bewilderment. You're not going for some debate bro knockout. You're asking them for an authentic, thoughtful response. You're asking them to be willing to drop their guard and self-reflect. You don't want the delivery to look like this. But for real though, do you really not care about animals at all? Like it doesn't matter at all what happens to them. People often have these knee-jerk reactions that aren't fully reflective of their actual values, and you're giving them space to pause and genuinely consider their position. Now at this point, basically one of two things will happen. They'll either say, yeah, they do value animals to some degree, just less than humans, or they'll shatter their molars as they continue biting down on that sweet, juicy bullet. And in each of these cases, I'm gonna suggest two responses that you might try. So let's address the valuing animals less first. Anytime you're looking to change minds, it's important to find as much common ground as you can. So if you don't perfectly equate animals and non-human animals, say that. If you also place more value on humans than chickens or fish or crickets, say that. It can sound something like this. Look, gun to my head, if I had to choose between a random human dying or a random chicken dying, I'd choose the chicken. I'd rather choose neither. But if those were my only choices, yeah. Now only say that if it's really the case. Don't fabricate part of your position just to find common ground. Then after you've established that, I'd go one of two ways. First, you could say, but is that the position that we're in? It seems to me the position we're in is between confining, mutilating, and killing the chicken or just leaving them alone. So if you value them at all, even a little bit, what would be the reason for causing them that unnecessary pain? Or if you're more about thought experiments and quantitative reasoning, and maybe more importantly, if they're more about thought experiments and quantitative reasoning, you can pose this to them. Imagine someone is going to come up and punch a dog in the stomach or a human in the stomach, and they're going to equalize the force based on the size of the person or dog or whatever. Do you have a preference as to which one gets hit, human or dog? Now, if they really care more about humans, this should be a no-brainer. But even here, I think a lot of people are gonna prefer for the human to get punched, which immediately calls into question whether they really value humans or their suffering more. But if they say they'd prefer the dog get hit, then ask them what about two dogs versus one human? And then what about three dogs versus one human? Ask them this until they get to some point where they'd rather a human get punched more than some number of dogs. And if they're being honest, this will clarify for both of you roughly how much they value animals and their subjective experiences relative to humans. Now I imagine most people are going to say between two and 10 dogs, but if they go higher than that, start painting a picture. You could say, so imagine a hundred dogs are lined up end to end and they totally encircle this block or they totally encircle a football field or something. I do this because it helps to keep the number less abstract and less distanced from human intuition. Now at some point they'll agree to a particular number and unless it's obscenely high, it doesn't really matter what it is. There's so many animals suffering for our burgers and chicken tenders that even if their limit is punching 10 dogs before one human, they would then have to be as concerned about land animal agriculture as they would be if there were five to 10 billion humans being confined, mutilated, and killed somewhere. Why is that? Because if they care about human suffering or exploitation 10 times more, which is to say they care about animal suffering and exploitation 10 times less, we just take the number of land animals slaughtered per year and divide by 10. Now, of course, there could be other uniquely human concerns like widespread demoralization or knock-on effects that would only be possible for individuals who could abstractly reason in some way, but this still works as a generally good heuristic. And the point is, it works well enough to start poking holes in the consistency of their implicit position that they don't care enough about animals for it to make sense that they stop eating their body parts and secretions. I say implicit here because this is obviously why they're saying they don't care about animals to begin with or whatever. I mean, in what other context does anyone ever make this claim. What about that argument where they assign literally zero moral worth to animals at all? It's a hell of a bullet to bite. Well, a lot of them will say that, but honestly, they're all lying. Uh, they all 100% lie about that. The, the people who say like, I assign zero moral worth to animals would not have any problem with um, animal abuse, but they do, they clearly do. Uh, only sociopaths don't. All right, so what if that bullet's looking dummy thick and they just can't resist? 
They say they just don't care about animal suffering or exploitation or rights or justice or any of it, like at all. Well, for the first strategy, this is when it helps to have some footage on your phone. And to that end, I'm gonna be editing together a series of short 30 to 60 second videos that highlight some particular aspect of animal agriculture, like gas chambers, chicks and blenders, family farms, etc. And I'm planning to post that on my Patreon for easy download. Now, why keep the videos so short? One, I wanna be able to download them to my phone without taking up too much space. This way, I can always show them to someone regardless of whether or not I have a signal. And two, because it allows me to present the person with a very low effort commitment. Anyone who has enough time to talk to you about the subject at length has 30 seconds to watch a video. So what do you do with this footage? Well, when they say they don't care at all, say cool. So you wouldn't mind watching this quick 30 second clip of a slaughterhouse. And from there, the conversation might go like this. No, I'm good. I don't wanna watch an animal getting killed. Well, if you don't care about animals, it should be the same as seeing someone smash a toaster or kick a rock. It is the same as seeing someone smash a toaster. I just don't like blood and gore. Even if it's in a movie and I know it's fake, I don't wanna see it. Oh, no problem. I've got plenty of clips that don't have any blood in them. Nah, honestly, it's just a waste of time. That's 30 seconds I'll never get back. No problem, I got you. I'll give you five bucks for your time. For 30 seconds, that's the equivalent of $600 an hour. Now look, I realize this recommendation is a little more salty and challenging than most of the things I suggest, and them not watching the video doesn't deductively prove that they actually care about animals. But if someone is really biting the bullet this hard, one of two things is probably happening. One, they're trolling, at which point all you're trying to do is make their position look as absurd as possible while throwing up a Hail Mary that they might at least watch the footage and have a change of heart. Two, they're a genuine psychopath or sociopath. If you trust the estimates, somewhere around 5% of people fall into that bucket. So if you do a lot of outreach, that's one in 20 people walking by who genuinely won't care about animals and there's little if anything you can do to convince them. But let's say they aren't a troll, aren't a sociopath, and really don't care about animals. Or let's say you don't feel like trying that somewhat technique. You could also try presenting them with this. If I didn't care about individuals with red hair, like really didn't care about them at all, would it be okay for me to confine and mutilate them? If there was a redhead who lived alone in the woods with no social connections, would it be okay for me to castrate them and cut their teeth out merely because I didn't care about them. In this scenario, which should we honor more? The way the victimizer feels about the victim or the victim's actual experience? And real quick bonus strategy. If you really, really suspect they're a sociopath or a psychopath who have a very hard or perhaps impossible time empathizing with animals or humans, then you can try and make a case based on more selfish motives. So you can say a whole food plant-based diet is cheaper and it'll improve your health. Now this obviously isn't advocating for veganism, but if there's truly no other option, it may be smart just to play to your outs and roll the dice on at least getting a small win. All right, so remember, start off with a genuine and empathetic follow-up asking if they really don't care. If they say they value animals less than humans, ask them if they have to value them the same to not want to throw them into gas chambers or give them the punching dogs or punching humans thought experiment. If they say they don't value animals at all, give them the watch a video test or the redhead thought experiment, depending on how salty you're feeling that day. And finally, if you suspect they're constitutionally unable to empathize with animals or humans, you can try appealing to selfish motives as a last ditch effort. So if you enjoyed this video and wanna help me make this my full-time career, check out my Patreon in the description. And a special shout out to my top tier patrons, Ryan O'Neill and Tom Eisenbeiss.